Now, back in December of 2016, I made a video on the difference between HP shield and armor and funny story. It was actually the first video that went viral on my channel and set me on the path to where I am today. However, a lot has changed since then with the new patches regarding how armor reduction is calculated, the way shield and armor stacks, and the damage calculations for many heroes. Since it's been over two years, I'm going to give you a fresh 2019 updated version on the difference between HP shield and armor, and stay tuned to the end for a little special announcement. Hey what's going on guys, my name is CarQ and let's kick things off with what HP is in Overwatch. HP stands for Hit Points or Health Points and is the effective health a hero has as displayed by the number beside your hero icon. Each individual segment of health you see on a hero represents 25 HP, so for example, both Ana and Ryan here have the exact same 200 HP as indicated with the 8 bars since 25 HP times 8 is 200. Now let's expand on the different types of HP and explain their unique characteristics. First we've got Health, which is the white portion of HP. Pretty standard, nothing special about it. The only way to restore your health is to be healed by a hero ability, whether that's from your teammate or from yourself, a health pack, going back to your spawn room, or the active payload on attack only at a rate of 10 HP per second. Now I say active payload because, for example, on hybrid maps like Hollywood, the payload isn't active and won't provide healing for the attackers until the point is captured. You also cannot regenerate health over time naturally unless you're Mercy, who is the only exception in the game. Mercy has a passive ability called Regeneration that, well, regenerates her own health at a rate of 20 health per second after not taking any damage for one second. If she uses her ultimate, the 20 health per second healing passive will always be active no matter if she's taking damage or not. The second property of HP in Overwatch is something called Shields as indicated by the light blue portion of a hero's HP bar. Unlike health, shields do have the ability to self-regenerate at a rate of 30 shield HP per second after not taking any damage for 3 seconds. This means that heroes that do possess shields, which are currently only Symmetra, Zarya, and Zenyatta, are able to take minor poke damage before teamfights for example and be just fine after a few seconds without having to stress out the other supports on the team to heal them. Shields will always be stacked second after health, so don't take too much poke damage past the shield and dip into the white health or else you'll find yourself unable to regenerate back to full HP. Now there's a second type of shield called Temporary Shields, which is indicated by the dark blue portion of a hero's HP bar. Unlike regular shields, Temporary Shields do not regenerate on its own, but will either decay or expire after a short period of time. There are only three heroes in the game who possess Temporary Shields at this time. The first is Doomfist, in which he gains 35 Temporary Shields per enemy hit with his abilities, up to a maximum of 150. The second is Lucio with his ultimate that grants 750 temporary shields to himself and any teammates within its range. The third is Wrecking Ball who gains 100 temporary shield per enemy within range and line of sight of his adaptive shield ability. For Doomfist and Lucio, any damage dealt to their temporary shields still acts as normal, granting ultimate charge to the enemy, so for example, if you die with a fresh Lucio ult on you, that enemy is going to be getting all the juicy ultimate charge equivalent of all that temporary shield HP. Wrecking Ball is the only exception in the game in which any of his temporary shields do not grant any ultimate charge whatsoever. Now onto armor. There are two types of armor in Overwatch. Natural armor which is yellow and temporary armor which is orange. Natural armor is what a hero innately possesses which can be healed, while temporary armor is gained through abilities which as of this video only Brigitte can do with her repair pack if she overheals you and through her ultimate rally. Temporary armor is, well, temporary, and cannot be replenished if lost unless the ability is used again. Armor is currently stacked in front of natural shields in the current patch, and don't get it confused with the Overwatch League because they're going to be playing on the previous patch until the end of stage 1. This means that right now, shield-based heroes like Zarya and Zenyatta will not be as oppressive when given temporary armor from Brigitte, especially in GOATS comps, since taking poke damage will remove the armor immediately now. This definitely affects the power of Zen Goats, but I still think it'll be a dominant comp for the foreseeable future. Alright, so what does armor do exactly? The easiest way to explain how it works is that armor reduces all instances of damage by 3. It's pretty straightforward. For example, if you swing your Genji Dragon Blade, it will deal 117 instead of the normal 120, and a McCree Body Shot will deal 67 instead of 70, for example. But what happens if a hero's instance of damage is not a high number like 120, but a low number like 4, 3, or 2, like Tracer or Hammond? 
In these cases, there is a rule in place that armor will reduce damage in half if a hero's instance of damage falls below 6. Basically, if your instance of damage is high, armor is relatively ineffective, but if your instance of damage is low, armor is super effective. So to summarize, again, armor reduces all instances of damage of 6 and higher by 3 damage, and all instances of damage below 6 by 50%. I'm going to call this the rule of 6 for the rest of the video. The only exception to all the properties of armor is Torbjorn's ultimate ability, which was recently reworked to deal more damage, like 190 per second, specifically against armor. Now I'm going to make things simple for you and list out the current heroes whose instance of damage gets affected by that rule of 6 and basically just suck against armor, from left to right in the order of the hero selection. Just look out for the heroes you primarily play here in this list and reconsider your target selection when an enemy possesses armor. D.Va's fusion cannon pellets, Roadhog's shotgun pellets, Winston's Tesla cannon, Wrecking Ball's cannons, Doomfist's hand cannon, May's stream of frost, Reaper's shotgun pellets, Sombra's bullets, Tracer's bullets, and Moira's biotic grasp. Alright, now here are a few more important notes on armor. The first is that any sort of modifier is always calculated before armor reduction calculations. This means that, for example, if you are hitting headshots, which are normally two times the damage, it will calculate that initial amount first, then reduce that instance of damage afterwards. Therefore, headshotting if you have low instances of damage, like Tracer, can potentially move your hero away from that rule of 6 and mathematically more than double your damage against armored targets when compared to the body shot damage. Conversely, any sort of damage reduction, such as receiving a nano boost, will reduce all that oncoming damage by 50% first, then calculate the armor damage reduction after, which therefore makes nanoing armored targets extremely efficient, so keep that in mind. The second important note is that the characteristics of your HP type are only active when that portion is taking damage itself. In other words, if you have armor layered underneath temporary shields, you will not receive any damage reduction when taking damage on that shield portion until you reach the armor portion itself. The third note is that with the recent patch, here is the updated priority list of HP. If somehow a hero possessed all the different types of HP, they would be taking damage in the following order, with the right side being what would be damaged first. Temporary shields, then temporary armor, then natural shields, then natural armor, then health. Alright, that's it for this video. I hope you found it both informative and refined when compared to the one I made two years ago. As I said earlier in the video, there is a special announcement, and in case you missed it on Twitter, I've been signed to the Toronto Defiant Overwatch League team to be a Twitch streamer and content creator here on YouTube, not a player. Don't get that confused. I'm truly humbled to be part of the Defiant family since Toronto is my home. So first thing on the agenda for you guys is to help me out here and show the Defiant some support. Let's bring them up from 5,000 to 10,000 subscribers right away and we'll produce some good collaborative content, some good interviews, some good tips, and yeah. Thank you guys so, so much for watching, subscribing, and supporting me over the past couple of years. I honestly wouldn't be here without you. See ya in the next video.